एम लक्ष्मीकांत इंडियन पॉलिटी चैप्टर 22 पार्लियामेंट मल्टीफंक्शनल रोल ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इन द इंडियन पॉलिटिको एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सिस्टम द पार्लियामेंट ऑक्युपाइज अ सेंट्रल पोजिशन एंड हैज अ मल्टीफंक्शनल रोल इट एंजॉयज एक्सटेंसिव पावर्स एंड परफॉर्म्स अ वराइटी ऑफ फंक्शन टूवर्ड्स द फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ इट्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली एक्सपेक्टेड रोल its powers and functions can be classified under the following heads 1 legislative powers and functions 2 executive powers and functions 3 financial powers and functions 4 constituent powers and functions 5 judicial powers and functions 6 electoral powers and functions 7 other powers and functions 1 legislative powers and functions The primary function of parliament is to make laws for the governance of the country. It has exclusive power to make laws on the subjects enumerated in the union list which at present has 98 subjects originally 97 subjects and on the residuary subjects that is subjects not enumerated in any of the three lists. With regard to concurrent list which has at present 52 subjects originally 47 subjects the parliament has overriding powers that is the law of parliament prevails over the law of the state legislature in case of a conflict between the two the constitution also empowers the parliament to make laws on the subjects enumerated in the state list which at present has 59 subjects originally 66 subjects under the following five abnormal circumstances a when rajya sabha passes a resolution to that effect b when a proclamation of national emergency is in operation c when two or more states make a joint request to the parliament d when necessary to give effect to international agreements treaties and conventions e when president's rule is in operation in the state all the ordinances issued by the president during the recess of the parliament must be approved by the parliament within 6 weeks after its reassembly an ordinance becomes inoperative if it is not approved by the parliament within that period the parliament makes laws in a skeleton form and authorizes the executive to make detailed rules and regulations within the framework of the parent law this is known as delegated legislation or executive legislation or subordinate legislation such rules and regulations are placed before the parliament for its examination two executive powers and functions the constitution of india established a parliamentary form of government in which the executive is responsible to the parliament for its policies and acts hence The parliament exercises control over the executive through question hour 0 hour half an hour discussion short duration discussion calling attention motion adjournment motion no confidence motion censure motion and other discussions it also supervises the activities of the executive with the help of its committees like committee on government assurance committee on subordinate legislation committee on petitions etc The ministers are collectively responsible to the parliament in general and to the Lok Sabha in particular. As a part of collective responsibility, there is individual responsibility that is each minister is individually responsible for the efficient administration of the ministry under his charge. This means that they continue in office so long as they enjoy the confidence of the majority members in the Lok Sabha. in other words the council of ministers can be removed from office by the lok sabha by passing a no confidence motion the lok sabha can also express lack of confidence in the government in the following ways a by not passing a motion of thanks on the president's inaugural address b by rejecting a money bill c by passing a censure motion or an adjournment motion d by defeating the government on a vital issue e by passing a cut motion therefore the first function of parliament can be said to be to select the group which is to form the government 
support and sustain it in power so long as it enjoys its confidence and to expel it when it ceases to do so and leave it to the people to decide at the next general election. 3. Financial powers and functions No tax can be levied or collected and no expenditure can be incurred by the executive except under the authority and with the approval of parliament. Hence, the budget is placed before the parliament for its approval. The enactment of the budget by the parliament legalizes the receipts and expenditure of the government for the ensuing financial year. The Parliament also scrutinizes government spending and financial performance with the help of its financial committees. These include Public Accounts Committee, Estimates Committee and Committee on Public Undertakings. They bring out the cases of illegal, irregular, unauthorized, improper usage and wastage and extravagance in public expenditure. Therefore, the parliamentary control over the executive in financial matters operates in two stages. A. Budgetary control, that is, control before the appropriation of grants through the enactment of the budget and B. Post-budgetary control, that is, control after the appropriation of grants through the three financial committees. The budget is based on the principle of annuity, that is, the Parliament grants money to the government for one financial year. If the granted money is not spent by the end of the financial year, then the balance expires and returns to the Consolidated Fund of India. This practice is known as the rule of lapse. It facilitates effective financial control by the Parliament as no reserve funds can be built without its authorization. However, the observance of this rule leads to heavy rush of expenditure towards the close of the financial year. This is popularly called as March Rush. 4. Constituent Powers and Functions The Parliament is vested with the powers to amend the Constitution by way of addition, variation or repeal of any provision. The major part of the Constitution can be amended by the Parliament with special majority, that is, a majority of the total membership of each House and a majority of not less than two-thirds of the members present and voting in each House. Some other provisions of the Constitution can be amended by the Parliament with simple majority, that is, a majority of the members present and voting in each House of Parliament. Only a few provisions of the Constitution can be amended by the Parliament, by special majority, and with the consent of at least half of the state legislatures, by simple majority. However, the power to initiate the process of the amendment of the Constitution, in all the three cases, lies exclusively in the hands of the Parliament and not the state legislature. There is only one exception, that is, the state legislature can pass a resolution requesting the parliament for the creation or abolition of the legislative council in the state. Based on the resolution, the parliament makes an act for amending the constitution to that effect. To sum up, the parliament can amend the constitution in three ways. a. By simple majority. b. By special majority. and c by special majority but with the consent of half of all the state legislatures. The constituent power of the parliament is not unlimited, it is subject to the basic structure of the constitution. In others' words, the parliament can amend any provision of the constitution except the basic features of the constitution. This was ruled by the Supreme Court in the Keswananda Bharati case, 1973 and reaffirmed in the Minerva Mills case, 1980. 5. Judicial Powers and Functions The judicial powers and functions of the Parliament include the following. a. It can impeach the President for the violation of the Constitution. b. It can remove the Vice President from his office. c. It can recommend the removal of judges, including Chief Justice, of the Supreme Court and the High Courts, Chief Election Commissioner, Controller and Auditor General to the President. d. It can punish its members or outsiders for the breach of its privileges or its contempt. 
सिक्स इलेक्टोरल पावर्स एंड फंक्शंस द पार्लियामेंट पार्टिसिपेट्स इन द इलेक्शन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट अलोंग विद द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज एंड इलेक्ट्स द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट द लोकसभा इलेक्ट्स इट्स स्पीकर एंड डेप्यूटी स्पीकर वाइल द राज्य सभा इलेक्ट्स इट्स डेप्यूटी चेयरमैन द पार्लियामेंट इज ऑल्सो ऑथराइज टू मेक लॉज टू रेग्युलेट द इलेक्शन टू द ऑफिस ऑफ प्रेजिडेंट एंड वाइस प्रेसिडेंट टू बोथ द हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट एंड टू बोथ द हाउसेज ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर अकॉर्डिंगली पार्लियामेंट इनैक्टेड द प्रेजिडेंशियल एंड वाइस प्रेजिडेंशियल इलेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू द रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पीपल एक्ट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी द रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पीपल एक्ट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वन एटसेट्रा Seven other powers and functions. The various other powers and functions of the parliament include: a. It serves as the highest deliberative body in the country. It discusses various issues of national and international significance. b. It approves all the three types of emergencies, national, state, and financial, proclaimed by the president. c. it can create or abolish the state legislative councils on the recommendation of the concerned state legislative assemblies d it can increase or decrease the area alter the boundaries and change the names of states of the indian union e it can regulate the organization and jurisdiction of the supreme court and high courts and can establish a common high court for two or more states ineffectiveness of parliamentary control the parliamentary control over government and administration in india is more theoretical than practical in reality the control is not as effective as it ought to be the following factors are responsible for this a the parliament has neither time nor expertise to control the administration which has grown in volume as well as complexity b Parliament's financial control is hindered by the technical nature of the demands for grants. The parliamentarians being laymen cannot understand them properly and fully. C. The legislative leadership lies with the executive and it plays a significant role in formulating policies. D. The very size of the parliament is too large and unmanageable to be effective. E. The majority support enjoyed by the executive in the parliament reduces the possibility of effective criticism. F. The financial committees like public accounts committee examines the public expenditure after it has been incurred by the executive. Thus they do post mortem work. G. The increased recourse to guillotine reduced the scope of financial control. H. the growth of delegated legislation has reduced the role of parliament in making detailed laws and has increased the powers of bureaucracy i the frequent promulgation of ordinances by the president dilutes the parliament's power of legislation j the parliament's control is sporadic general and mostly political in nature k lack of strong and steady opposition in the parliament and a setback in the parliamentary behavior and ethics have also contributed to the ineffectiveness of legislative control over administration in india position of rajya sabha the constitutional position of the rajya sabha as compared with the lok sabha can be studied from three angles one where rajya sabha is equal to lok sabha two where rajya sabha is unequal to lok sabha three where rajya sabha has special powers that are not at all shared with the lok sabha equal status with lok sabha in the following matters the powers and status of the rajya sabha are equal to that of the lok sabha one introduction and passage of ordinary bills two introduction and passage of constitutional amendment bills three introduction and passage of financial bills involving expenditure from the consolidated fund of india four election and impeachment of the president five election and removal of the vice president however rajya sabha alone can initiate the removal of the vice president 
He is removed by a resolution passed by the Rajya Sabha by an effective majority, which is a type of special majority, and agreed to by the Lok Sabha by a simple majority. 6. Making recommendation to the President for the removal of Chief Justice and Judges of Supreme Court and High Courts, Chief Election Commissioner and Controller and Auditor General. 7. Approval of ordinances issued by the President. 8. Approval of proclamation of all three types of emergencies by the President. 9. Selection of ministers including the Prime Minister. Under the Constitution, the ministers including the Prime Minister can be members of either house. However, irrespective of their membership, they are responsible only to the Lok Sabha. 10. Consideration of the reports of the constitutional bodies like Finance Commission, Union Public Service Commission, Controller and Auditor General, etc. 11. Enlargement of the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and the Union Public Service Commission. Unequal status with Lok Sabha. In the following matters, the powers and status of the Rajya Sabha are unequal to that of the Lok Sabha. 1. A money bill can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha and not in the Rajya Sabha. 2. Rajya Sabha cannot amend or reject a money bill. It should return the bill to the Lok Sabha within 14 days, either with recommendations or without recommendations. 3. The Lok Sabha can either accept or reject all or any of the recommendations of the Rajya Sabha. In both the cases, the money bill is deemed to have been passed by the two houses. 4. A financial bill, not containing solely the matters of Article 110, also can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha and not in the Rajya Sabha. But, with regard to its passage, both the houses have equal powers. 5. The final power to decide whether a particular bill is a money bill or not is vested in the Speaker of the Lok Sabha. 6. The Speaker of Lok Sabha presides over the joint sitting of both the houses. 7. The Lok Sabha with greater number wins the battle in a joint sitting except when the combined strength of the ruling party in both the houses is less than that of the opposition parties. 8. Rajya Sabha can only discuss the budget but cannot vote on the demands for grants, which is the exclusive privilege of the Lok Sabha. 9. A resolution for the discontinuance of the national emergency can be passed only by the Lok Sabha and not by the Rajya Sabha. 10. The Rajya Sabha cannot remove the Council of Ministers by passing a no confidence motion. This is because the Council of Ministers is collectively responsible only to the Lok Sabha. But the Rajya Sabha can discuss and criticize the policies and activities of the government. Special Powers of Rajya Sabha The Rajya Sabha has been given four exclusive or special powers that are not enjoyed by the Lok Sabha. 1. It can authorize the Parliament to make a law on a subject enumerated in the State List, Article 249. 2. It can authorize the Parliament to create new All India services common to both the Centre and States, Article 312. 3. It alone can initiate a move for the removal of the Vice President. In other words, a resolution for the removal of the Vice President can be introduced only in the Rajya Sabha and not in the Lok Sabha, Article 67. 4. If a proclamation is issued by the President for imposing national emergency or President's rule or financial emergency at a time when the Lok Sabha has been dissolved or the dissolution of the Lok Sabha takes place within the period allowed for its approval, then the proclamation can remain effective even if it is approved by the Rajya Sabha alone, Articles 352, 356 and 360. An analysis of the above points makes it clear that the position of the Rajya Sabha in our constitutional system is not as weak as that of the House of Lords in the British constitutional system nor as strong as that of the Senate in the American constitutional system. Except in financial matters and control over the Council of Ministers, 
The powers and status of the Rajya Sabha in all other spheres are broadly equal and coordinate with that of the Lok Sabha. Even though the Rajya Sabha has been given less powers as compared with the Lok Sabha, its utility is supported on the following grounds. 1. It checks hasty, defective, careless and ill-considered legislation made by the Lok Sabha by making provision of revision and thought. 2. It facilitates giving representation to eminent professionals and experts who cannot face the direct election. The President nominates 12 such persons to the Rajya Sabha. 3. It maintains the federal equilibrium by protecting the interests of the states against the undue interference of the centre. Parliamentary Privileges Meaning, parliamentary privileges are special rights, immunities, and exemptions enjoyed by the two houses of parliament, their committees and their members. They are necessary in order to secure the independence and effectiveness of their actions. Without these privileges, the houses can neither maintain their authority, dignity and honour nor can protect their members from any obstruction in the discharge of their parliamentary responsibilities. The Constitution has also extended the parliamentary privileges to those persons who are entitled to speak and take part in the proceedings of a House of Parliament or any of its committees. These include the Attorney General of India and Union Ministers. It must be clarified here that the parliamentary privileges do not extend to the President who is also an integral part of the Parliament. Classification Parliamentary privileges can be classified into two broad categories. One, those that are enjoyed by each House of Parliament collectively and two, those that are enjoyed by the members individually. Collective privileges The privileges belonging to each House of Parliament collectively are 1. It has the right to publish its reports, debates and proceedings and also the right to prohibit others from publishing the same. The 44th Amendment Act of 1978 restored the freedom of the press to publish true reports of parliamentary proceedings without prior permission of the House. But this is not applicable in the case of a secret sitting of the House. 2. It can exclude strangers from its proceedings and hold secret sittings to discuss some important matters. 3. It can make rules to regulate its own procedure and the conduct of its business and to adjudicate upon such matters. 4. It can punish members as well as outsiders for breach of its privileges or its contempt by reprimand, admonition or imprisonment, also suspension or expulsion, in case of members. 5. It has the right to receive immediate information of the arrest, detention, conviction, imprisonment and release of a member. 6. It can institute inquiries and order the attendance of witnesses and send for relevant papers and records. 7. The courts are prohibited to inquire into the proceedings of a house or its committees. 8. No person, either a member or outsider, can be arrested and no legal process, civil or criminal, can be served within the precincts of the house without the permission of the presiding officer. Individual Privileges The privileges belonging to the members individually are 1. They cannot be arrested during the session of parliament and 40 days before the beginning and 40 days after the end of a session. This privilege is available only in civil cases and not in criminal cases or preventive detention cases. 2. They have freedom of speech in Parliament. No member is liable to any proceedings in any court for anything said or any vote given by him in Parliament or its committees. This freedom is subject to the provisions of the Constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure of Parliament. 3. They are exempted from jury service. They can refuse to give evidence and appear as a witness in a case pending in a court when Parliament is in session. Breach of Privilege and Contempt of the House 
when any individual or authority disregards or attacks any of the privileges, rights and immunities, either of the member individually or of the house in its collective capacity, the offence is termed as breach of privilege and is punishable by the house. Any act or omission which obstructs a house of parliament, its member or its officer in the performance of their functions or which has a tendency, directly or indirectly to produce results against the dignity, authority and honour of the house is treated as a contempt of the house. Though the two phrases, breach of privilege and contempt of the house are used interchangeably, they have different implications. Normally, a breach of privilege may amount to contempt of the house. Likewise, contempt of the house may include a breach of privilege also. Contempt of the house, however, has wider implications. There may be a contempt of the house without specifically committing a breach of privilege. Similarly, actions which are not breaches of any specific privilege but are offences against the dignity and authority of the house amount to contempt of the house. For example, Disobedience to a legitimate order of the house is not a breach of privilege, but can be punished as contempt of the house. Sources of Privileges Originally, the Constitution, Article 105, expressly mentioned to privileges, that is, freedom of speech in Parliament and right of publication of its proceedings. With regard to other privileges, it provided that they were to be the same as those of the British House of Commons, its committees and its members on the date of its commencement, i.e. 26 January 1950, until defined by Parliament. The 44th Amendment Act of 1978 provided that the other privileges of each House of Parliament, its committees and its members are to be those which they had on the date of its commencement, i.e. 20th June 1979, until defined by Parliament. This means that the position with regard to other privileges remains same. In other words, the amendment has made only verbal changes by dropping a direct reference to the British House of Commons without making any change in the implication of the provision. It should be noted here that the Parliament, till now, has not made any special law to exhaustively codify all the privileges. They are based on five sources, namely 1. Constitutional provisions 2. Various laws made by Parliament 3. Rules of both the Houses 4. Parliamentary conventions and 5. Judicial interpretations Sovereignty of Parliament The doctrine of sovereignty of Parliament is associated with the British Parliament. Sovereignty means the supreme power within the state. That supreme power in Great Britain lies with the Parliament. There are no legal restrictions on its authority and jurisdiction. Therefore, the sovereignty of Parliament, parliamentary supremacy, is a cardinal feature of the British constitutional system. According to A. V. Dicey, the British jurist, this principle has three implications. 1. The Parliament can make, amend, substitute or repeal any law. De Lolme, a British political analyst, said, The British Parliament can do everything except make a woman a man and a man a woman. 2. The Parliament can make constitutional laws by the same procedure as ordinary laws. In other words, there is no legal distinction between the constituent authority and the legislative authority of the British Parliament. 3. The parliamentary laws cannot be declared invalid by the judiciary as being unconstitutional. In other words, there is no system of judicial review in Britain. The Indian Parliament, on the other hand, cannot be regarded as a sovereign body in the similar sense as there are legal restrictions on its authority and jurisdiction. The factors that limit the sovereignty of Indian Parliament are 1. Written nature of the Constitution The Constitution is the fundamental law of the land in our country. It has defined the authority and jurisdiction of all the three organs of the Union Government and the nature of interrelationship between them. 
Hence, the Parliament has to operate within the limits prescribed by the Constitution. There is also a legal distinction between the legislative authority and the constituent authority of the Parliament. Moreover, to effect certain amendments to the Constitution, the ratification of half of the states is also required. In Britain, on the other hand, the Constitution is neither written nor there is anything like a fundamental law of the land. 2. Federal System of Government India has a federal system of government with a constitutional division of powers between the Union and the states. Both have to operate within the space allotted to them. Hence, the lawmaking authority of the Parliament gets confined to the subjects enumerated in the Union List and Concurrent List and does not extend to the subjects enumerated in the State List except in five abnormal circumstances and that too for a short period. Britain, on the other hand, has a unitary system of government and hence, all the powers are vested in the centre. 3. System of Judicial Review the adoption of an independent judiciary with the power of judicial review also restricts the supremacy of our Parliament. Both the Supreme Court and High Courts can declare the laws enacted by the Parliament as void and ultra vis, unconstitutional, if they contravene any provision of the Constitution. On the other hand, there is no system of judicial review in Britain. The British courts have to apply the parliamentary laws to specific cases without examining their constitutionality, legality or reasonableness. 4. Fundamental Rights The authority of the parliament is also restricted by the incorporation of a Code of Justiciable Fundamental Rights under Part 3 of the Constitution. Article 13 prohibits the state from making a law that either takes away totally or abrogates in part a fundamental right. Hence, a parliamentary law that contravenes the fundamental rights shall be void. In Britain, on the other hand, there is no codification of justiciable fundamental rights in the constitution. The British Parliament has also not made any law that lays down the fundamental rights of the citizens. However, it does not mean that the British citizens do not have rights. Though there is no charter guaranteeing rights, there is maximum liberty in Britain due to the existence of the rule of law. Therefore, even though the nomenclature and organisational pattern of our Parliament is similar to that of the British Parliament, there is a substantial difference between the two. The Indian Parliament is not a sovereign body in the sense in which the British Parliament is a sovereign body. Unlike the British Parliament, the authority and jurisdiction of the Indian Parliament are defined, limited and restrained. In this regard, the Indian Parliament is similar to the American legislature, known as Congress. In USA also, the sovereignty of Congress is legally restricted by the written character of the Constitution, the Federal System of Government, the System of Judicial Review and the Bill of Rights. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to buy this book, then link in the description you can buy it from there. If this video help you in any way so please do like and share this video and hit the subscribe button.